Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Joseph and we finally got one full match from Hood, Outlaws and Legends and I gotta say to be honest, there were some positives, there were some negatives. I want to start with the positives, saying that the classes actually, it was really nice to find out that you could fine tune each class to your playstyle. You'll be able to take on multiple opponents if you're smart and the way you design your class, you really can make it more aggressive or more defensive, more stealthy, whatever way you like to play. Not to mention, I thought the maps were actually quite large. The map that we got to see, there were different points of, you know, stealthing around. And there was many points of engagement where you could fight. You can retreat if you need to. That really had an interesting design. It would look like an organic design to the world. And it looks like it really will require a teamwork to pull off the heist together. And it looks like each class is really going to offer their own benefits and in unison is what's going to help you get to the end goal. But also this could be a negative if it's one of those games where people do not chat. I 100% see this being an issue as I think it'll be very required for you to all be chatting together and planning together so you can help each other out. I don't think like a, just like a simple point and click system is it really going to work in this game? But you know, not always, not everybody always wants to play with a mic. So we'll see how that really turns out. But some of the things that kind of automatically stood out to me that was like, mm, okay, now I can see that this is really is a budget game. And that's the animations. Some of the anima animations were really janky. I, I do like the execution animations. They do, do look nice. But for example, the running looks really awkward, not to mention it's really slow. At full sprint animation, it looks like the character was just like power walking. I don't feel like you're actually escaping from the enemies or from other human players. So I don't know how that's going to work. It seems like it's going to be really easy to overwhelm you if you're trying to run away from a couple of uh, people, AI or human players. We'll see how it really turns on the full game. And it looks like you can spawn camp. They even showed it in the gameplay. You can spawn camp the enemy team's point which I don't know how good that's going to be because the guy was just kind of like slaughtering them unsuspectedly in that little corner. Hopefully that's just a small example. You can actually go through a different exit or they're purposely playing a little bit bad to kind of demonstrate an idea. Also, the enemy AI looks really dumb. And I mean really dumb. But I do believe it's done on purpose, almost like to make the AI more of an obstacle rather than a challenge. So that's going to be interesting. It's it's a mix. You can definitely tell that this is a budgeted game, but the, the thing that's going to bring to the table is a unique idea to the gameplay. And it's going to be really interesting to see how it's going to perform server-wise, of course, being a new game, being from a smaller studio. If too many people jump on the game, I remember this happened with Friday the 13th when it first came out. The servers were overwhelmed and for the first week, you couldn't really play it. So that was an issue and Outriders had this issue as well. So we'll see how this performs in the first week. But my overall thoughts are, it's about what I expected for a $30 game. I didn't expect the AAA quality and there isn't AAA quality here. But what there is here is a unique idea with interesting gameplay mechanics, with decent graphics, interesting artwork, what seems like to be fun gameplay, but it's really gonna depend, I think, on the well, communication between players and as well as kind of how, how the flow of, the pace of the match is gonna go and how well you can fight off retrieve the chest, how everything is going to be, how tough the AI, how tough it is to fight humans. Can you run away? Can you escape? Can you hide? All these kinds of elements come into play. It's really going to determine whether this game is going to have longevity as well as right now it's only four classes. It means, you know, you can't switch out classes. So it's going to be interesting to see if you're forced into a specific class or can you have duplicates of certain classes so you have to have certain classes. It'll be interesting if you can have four hunters and how is that going to turn out? And of course, it's also going to depend how the longevity of the game is how frequently they're going to be releasing maps and characters. Because if it's like Rainbow Six, I don't think this game is really going to survive because it's a much smaller title and it's a new franchise. It will need to pump out content much, much quicker. It's for get people excited. I mean, look at what happened to Marvel Avengers. People just got restless and that was a big budget title. You need to pump out content more often for people to be in it. And it seems like with five maps and four characters, it's, it's going to depend. I think the biggest uh, thing that makes a lot of people kind of just go for it is it's 30 bucks. Even the uh, legendary edition where you get the game pass, 
it's 50 bucks. It's still cheaper than a full price next gen game. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm excited. I'm, I already have the game pre ordered. I'm still excited for the game. It hasn't changed my opinion on it. It just kind of made me temper my expectations just a little bit. I would like to hear from you guys. Have you thought the same after watching a gameplay match of the Hood Outlaws and Legends? Or were you even more excited than you were before? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you do enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe down below. Guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out.